It's here. It's here. It's finally, finally here. There's something about these always puts me in a singing kind of mood. I will try to refrain from another refrain of it's here, however. Uh, she comes in plus or minus 4,000 pounds uh, pretty much on the nose. It varies a little bit depending on how you build it. Um, and, and that is kind of the first indication of several that this is not just like a Geo Pro clone. That's what I like about these. When I first saw them, that's what I sort of thought it was going to be. But as Jacob went through and developed this, what I really realized is that it's a betweener. It fits somewhere interestingly between a Geo Pro and like a Rockwood Mini Light. And it really does stand out, I think, on its own merits and has its own uh, high value points. Um, this is a double Asdell product. It's Asdell on the inside and outside of the laminated walls. It's on a little bit bigger, heavier chassis. It's seven and a half foot wide, so it's a little bit bigger than a Geo Pro, which is adding some of that weight. But that allows them to enclose the underbelly, an option on things like 12 volt tank heaters, like we've done to this one right here. Um, that's something that most single axle campers just can't do. Uh, it, it has more storage space. It has a little bit taller ceiling, a heavier roof load, uh, you know, heavier roof construction about it. There's a lot of really cool things that go into this. You know, available factory solar package, true Blackstone griddle. <laughs> These things are awesome, man. Now, um, this is new, so please, all the feedback you can provide is welcome. Uh, if you love it, if you hate it, I don't care. Let me know everything you can that you think about it, and that is super, super valuable to us and everybody else, even the development teams. They're really watching early release videos like these here at Halid RV to make sure that they know like what kind of things that they need to adjust moving forward, so your input really does help here. And I think one of the first things to mention in here is how there's nothing like necessarily revolutionary or new about this layout. I've got a couple bunks just to my left. You know, you got your front bed, the door beside that little kitchenette. Everybody and their brother has built, the, this is like the default small bunkhouse floor plan, right? So there's a hundred different versions of campers like this out there. Why would you go with the J Feather? And that's what I want to show you are some of those little differences, like the fact that it has a full six and a half foot interior height. It's got a normal camper body, which is where some of that extra weight comes from. But a lot of that extra cabinet space that we're looking at as we go through here, that's where some of the extra weight comes from too. The little bit wider body, the heavier chassis. Um, I get a lot of questions about this, so I, I just want to, you know, proactively make you aware. This is a 54 by 74 inch mattress. Um, I, you know, that's always the number one question I have in little campers like this. I'd rather just proactively address that, get that right out of the way so that we don't have any questions. If you appreciate that, hit a little like button on the video, subscribe, follow along. You got our little headboard area here. Now, an interesting thing on this, if you wanted to, you could remove the headboard, although you've got that handy pop-up power tower right there. You probably wouldn't want to do this, but you could, in theory, remove that headboard to put a longer 80-inch bed in here if you you are so inclined. A nice detail in this though is that privacy curtain that they have right there, but even more, as we scroll our way up here, we see one of those big like XL vent fans right there, giving us some really just top-notch airflow coming in through those big cross breeze windows, especially if you open like the kitchen window and the, the screen door on the entry door. Now the TV kind of brackets against the wall a little bit, and the thing is there's a couple things going on here. First of all, this is 12 volt powered. Secondly, it has it's a combo. It's a TV and soundbar combo. That's why you kind of see the soundbar functionality, that little, you know, lighting behind the Furion stitching down there. Uh, it's it's an uncommon object you don't typically find. It's, you know, giving you two functions in one object, which is, which is hard to do in little campers like this. Another thing that kind of gives us a little bit of a two-in-one is what they did with the storage below the bed here. So if we take a look, you see that those are like floating removable cubes. You could sit on them if you want. Uh, like maybe you get a little uh, kind of outdoor, um, a little rug space or something like that. You could use them like little outdoor benches, basically. All the cabinetry here is pocket screwed, just like the uh, you know the bigger J feathers and things like that. And that window, the the light outside was just not conducive to what I'm doing, but. That is the biggest window I've ever seen in a floor plan like this from any manufacturer ever. Huge views out of your uh, window right there. Now the dining table, uh, below that you can see she is completely carpetless. That of course can fold down into a sleeper. And actually, why don't I give you a, uh, a look in the storage up here. 
And then as we work our way down, let you see that sleeper in action. And then below that, what you're actually going to see is the storage below the benches. Now you may notice there's only full storage under one side, the side near the bunks. You might be going, why is that? When we go outside, you'll kind of see why when we look at the sidewalls, the water heater and some stuff is located under that one right there. See, what they wanted to do is make sure you maintained a full front pass-through storage compartment while also giving us the cargo bunks. And again, that's one of those fine detail differences on this one versus so many other things like it. The other versions of floor plans like this that I see, they usually have either the cargo bunk house or a full pass-through front compartment. And this one gives us both, but even more, check this out. Up in the corner, each bunk has its own set of household, USB uh, outlets, as well as its own little individual kind of light. Again, in little single axle campers like this, it's those one, two, three details I don't typically find. Separate curtains for the upper and lower bunk. Just little, you know, it, it makes a difference. Those things add up quickly. What we're looking at here is the charge controller. Um, this is roof solar ready always, but you can build it with a uh, 190 watt roof solar package. It also, obviously, you have that uh, you know 30 amp controller right there. Full size roof air conditioner. We'll turn this thing into an ice box if you want it. And just for a peek at all the storage, we'll work our way down here. We are looking at the modern farmhouse decor today, which lightens and brightens up the uh, cabinet space here significantly, I think. Um, the uh, other thing that we're looking at is the optional uh, 12 volt DC compressor fridge. So that is about, about 25 to 30% bigger than the standard refrigerator that you would usually see in this model. Um, couple quick things folks might ask. You have the option of uh, going with a convection microwave. They are not offering at this time a propane oven. Instead, what they're doing is really maximizing the storage uh, right there. What they do long term, I suppose that really depends on your personal feedback. Grab my Michigan mittens here because she's chilly today. I want to show you that the bathroom door does actually lock, which is nice. And I'm not going to tell you that I had monster legroom in front of that toilet, but I had enough. You know, I, I, I had enough to do what I need to do. The cutaway on that bath countertop right there is also very nice for a bigger person like me. So I don't feel you know, like if I shift left or right to do whatever I need to do, um, you know, I don't feel like I'm constantly getting jabbed in the side by something. And look at the this here. Uh, easy step in shower, but with enough of a lip, you could probably give like a, a little kiddo, a little baby, a bit of a bath over there. But the shower curtain is actually on a track and it radiuses at the top top so that you don't got to worry about water splashing out you don't got to worry about the curtain attacking you like a squid under the water you know suck to you and that radius bar gives us some headroom or uh, elbow room there and then for headroom i am a little bit taller my head does go in the bubble a little bit on this one when i'm showering but the fact is for no longer than i'm in there uh the rest of the rv works just fine for me the rest of the time and reminding us over here that we have the best warranty available we have our drunken octopus coat hangers how you doing fellas all right i will warn you i am getting bombarded with wind currently there's nothing in the background that really indicates that you can't see like a lot of leaves really blowing around that big tree is too far away but when it's like this i sometimes have some audio issues i'm doing the best i can i apologize if the audio gets a little choppy uh what i want to show you here is 20 foot tip to tail front to bumper that is a nice easy towing length plus you're going to get some things here that you just don't get anywhere else like first of all how about the fact that jayco's the only user of actual blackstone products this is the i think that's a 17 inch uh griddle yeah it even says right out <laughs> i'm sitting here guessing it's like hey dummy in bright orange 17 inches <laughs> you think oh well whatever anyway but what's neat is the uh the the kind of pedestal that it sits on is is slotted for the wider blackstone if you wanted to get one the propane cooker hooker is right back here and you see that little receiver jab right there with the bar that sticks out i believe that is what jaco is going to be calling the uh j port or some variation of something like that. that's a very jaco thing if you take any object add the letters j a y in front of it and now it's ours <laughs> 
But exclusive qualities here, like a two plus three year best in class Jayco warranty. How about some best in class Goodyear Wrangler tires? Most other manufacturers, when you get some kind of lifted off road tire package like this, you don't get the nicer Goodyears. Now you might notice that's a triple step Moride stable step. Not a double like you usually find on a single axle because again, this is bigger, this is heavier. This is, oh, I've got my hand in the uh, camera there trying to block the microphones, uh, you know, from getting eaten up by the wind as much as I can, sorry. But it's on a bigger chassis. That's how the underbelly is enclosed, which is an unbelievably uncommon quality in a little tree like this, an actual enclosed underbelly in that best in class 55 gallon uh, holding tank capacity. You've got lights on both sides to pass through, battery disconnect on the opposite side. Those uh, switches right there would activate the lights in the pass through as well as uh, up on the nose, by the way, a little kind of hitch lighting. Remember, this is uh, double Asdell now. You, well, these always have been, but um, Jayco hasn't really used a lot of Asdell in the past. I got a feeling this is going to be a little bit of a proving ground for them. I think that, uh, it, you know, if this all goes well and they have good records out of this, which so far they have, you're going to see Asdell maybe creep further into the Jayco family. I guess time will really be the determining factor there. I don't have any you know, like information that indicates that to me. Just, just a guess. Seven and a half foot wide body means it's a little bit easier to see around, but a little bit bigger on the inside for that extra space that we need. Double propane tanks and power tongue jack. Again, bigger camper features in a small space. These are always roof solar prepped and side solar prepped. You'll see that we often add the factory solar package on the roof. You see these little, some people call them Nerf bars. Jayco calls them brush bars. The idea there is beautiful looking trailer. And what they don't want to have happen is they don't want you to go off grid and have some sticks or something like that scratch up all your fiberglass. And they didn't want to just layer it with diamond plate. So they did something different. What do you folks think about those? You love them? You hate them? Either way, let me know. <laughs> I love this big window over here. That is an awesome big window overlooking your dining space. Outside shower, black tank flush, and that is both a hot and cold shower there and that is a gas and electric water heater too which is kind of nice the um cargo door in the back here some people like these some don't i'd really be interested to know what do you think do you think it's best if they have one if they don't have one right wrong otherwise you know what's what's your verdict on that um the uh thing here though is it's not like a security concern because you have the same deadbolt here that you have on the main entry door but if you flip that bunk up out of the way what it gives you is this big, just big cargo space. And look at the details here. That I mean, even a, a light for the bottom cargo space, that's the kind of stuff manufacturers just don't typically give you. And it's a simple, easy one hand, kind of push it and forget it, kind of almost auto latch system. Lilu Dallas auto latch. <laughs> Can anybody get the reference I just threw out there? I'm pretty sure somebody will. Now on the back here, that is a full matching Goodyear Wrangler spare. I hope you never need it. These have the J Smart lighting package on them, signals, markers, and reverse travel. So if you flip on your turn signals, the lights on the side of the trailer blink along with it. 300 pound rated rear roof ladder rack that is fully removable. That's rated for 50% more weight than most of these things typically are. Also, it's not just rear camera ready, it's side camera ready. And one other thing before I try to give you some view of the roof here. I know I probably shouldn't get up there, but I'm going to. You're going to look at this and say, what a bunch of dummies. They put the backup camera prep right under that ladder rung. Thing is, they looked at that and they had the same thought. So they made sure it was positioned so that when installed, a camera actually peeks right through those ladder rungs and is not obstructed. And I know I shouldn't be up here whatsoever, and I'm going to get some flack for it from you folks. And I appreciate that you're concerned my safety but i want to give you a look at some things so first of all the optional 190 watt roof solar panel that you have available on this that's a big chunk of solar to keep your batteries up and running very handy if you're going to be off grid for a while uh they always have the handy little ratchet strap kind of loop through bar over here in case you want to add something like a uh, kayak rack or bike rack to your magnum truss roof system heaviest roof load rating in class and if you look that little vent up front there has those handy little kind of earlets on it so that if you do want to add like a, a big vent fan cover up there you can without needing to screw anything into the roof so let me know what you think because 
I think that thing is pretty sharp right there. That is fun. I love that big window and that cargo door combo. There's, this thing just has not just good features, but just a good look about it, don't you think? Um, down the line, if uh, like I said, leave me some information. Let me know what you think, plus, minus, positive, negative, whatever in between. Um, and uh, if there's anything I haven't answered, any other questions you have, uh, leave me a note, and I'll do my best to kind of fill in the blank. Short of that, if you need hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery, or anything in between, remember... We don't do hidden dealer fees at Halet RV. We just do ninja head socks and straightforward deals. <laughs> so take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halet camping, everyone.